everyone back here from our pad here i am on a harvesting roll yesterday i harvested sweet potatoes out of from an old composted sweet potato that i composted like months ago and guys if you missed that harvest video you have got to go watch that harvest video sweet potato harvest but today we are going to be harvesting this beauty behind me do you know what this beauty is right here this is my longevity spinach and for, for those of you who have watched my earlier videos or watched my video where i showed you how i make my favorite morning shake you know that longevity spinach is an incredibly easy plant to grow and it's extremely nutritious it is used to fight high blood pressure cholesterol diabetes just so much it has so many minerals that in it guys it's just a really healthy plant and what i love about it is that it took zero work this started off with two little twigs that i planted in the ground that really looked like they were dying for like the first couple months and then guys it took over the bed so today i'm going to show you how i'm going to be harvest my, my um longevity spinach and I, then i'm going to be talking to you about how i'm going to be using it and how i'm going to be preserving some and how i'm going to be making sure that i have longevity spinach for um for future years for years to come so let's get started Okay, I'm gonna start with cleaning up the edges because the longevity spinach has come all the way over the edges. <clears throat> the reason I have to clean it up is that I do not intend at all for the longevity spinach to grow this much. And um, if you have a small patch, you don't even need clippers. It breaks very easily. What I absolutely love about longevity spinach you can literally stick it in water, it will grow roots, and you can have more longevity spinach. I think if I realized how much spinach I would be getting, um, I would have probably had it in a corner or somewhere in a garden instead of directly in my veggie bed. I want to, even though this is a vegetable, it is spinach, and I do eat it like spinach, I want my veggie bed to be used for more than one things. I actually had several scotch bonnets and other plants in here. That have been completely hidden a couple of them literally just popped popped through so i don't know what else i'm gonna find when i'm under here but this bed started off mainly with tomatoes and other veggies and it ended up being just longevity spinach i think it's an absolutely wonderful vegetable i've been having this in my morning shake almost every day Look at this, guys. Everywhere it fell, it, it got roots. Mm. Mm. All right, so. I actually started some long journey to finish over by the chicken coop area. And that's been growing up really well. I, I planted it close to the chicken coop. So that they can have fresh spinach to eat whenever they want. Ah, let me go on the other side. Well, actually, let me finish here. What I plan on doing when I harvest this, um, I'm gonna replant some, and I am gonna compost some, and I'm gonna freeze a ton because this will last me for the entire summer. That easy. I don't. I don't even need the clippers. Mm. Longevity spinach has a very pleasant, a very mild flavor. Um, when you have it in your morning shakes, you know you're getting the nutrition, but you, it doesn't really have a strong flavor, so you can easily add it to your shakes. Um, the other day, I had some friends visiting. Some of my my sisters came to visit, and they actually uh, one of them made a stir fry she used longevity spinach baby bok choy and some mushrooms and guys it was so delicious it was so delicious so you can use it you get as a stir fry by itself 
or you can add it to your stir fries you can add it to soups you can add it to sauces there's just so much you can do with it everything you can do with regular spinach you can do with longevity spinach what i love about this it is extremely pest resistant um for you guys who watch my earlier videos the pests were relentless this year the leaf-footed nymphs were relentless the white flies that I, that took over um that i had earlier i had powdery mildew i had like every kind of pest um if you guys watch my earlier videos i even said it's like different pests that i never ever saw before in south florida i have them here in central florida but my longevity spinach guys look at it it is still beautiful it is still extremely healthy i had no pest damage zero pest damage in my longevity spinach so i think it's a great thing you know to work with nature work with the product work with the the fruits and the veggies that work well in your climate and for your you know your whole climate because it doesn't make sense growing things that you always have to be using pesticides or you always have to be using like a ton of fertilizers this was wonderful it it, it needed no pesticides so um right now i'm not gonna remove the whole thing i'm gonna cut it back significantly as i said it's my first time growing it so i'm hoping that since we're moving into we're in the fall moving into the winter season i'm hoping that um it will kind of stay in control so i can grow more things what i think i'll eventually do is remove the entire um, root ball of the longevity spinach and transplant it somewhere else in the garden and also transplant it in pots transplanting in pots is a great way to preserve um whether it's longevity spinach or cranberry hibiscus or any of your veggies that become overwhelming like this or mint anything in the mint family it's really a great idea to grow them in large pots because then they will you'll still be able to produce enough to feed yourself feed your family feed your friends but you know it will be controlled so i plan on having several very large pots of this because i ate this a lot I, as a matter of fact i started eating it more than even my sweet potato vines I, you guys know how much i love my sweet potato vines so anyway let me continue harvesting enough talking i can i can work and talk that's right mr pinky i can work and talk so i'm gonna i think i'm gonna cut along the edge first and then cut in the middle here all right so the first thing i'm gonna do you can see it's strangling my scotch bonnet and my scotch bonnet i have to say has been so faithful the beginning of the year i had to cut it back completely because it was dying several times i thought it was done but it consistently gives it, it's giving me scotch bonnet the entire year it never stopped giving me i haven't bought scotch bonnet for the entire year uh-oh wow guys you remember my thai chili pepper <laughs> i just cut oh my gosh let me show you guys so i just cut right here and guys look you remember my thai chili peppers so i totally forgot about this tree but the longevity spinach completely strangled it that's why i really have to cut this back yes mr pinky we hear you I have to oh geez hold on i'm gonna put this down while i continue cutting this is gonna be enough spinach to fill my fill my freezer I have a very dull cutter. It's <clears throat> probably better to just use my hand. I have a very dull cutter. <clears throat> so this is going to be the first time I'm seeing the side of this bed. This is going to be the first time I'm seeing the side of this bed in months. Whew. 
it is so thick and then guys look my jalapeno just reappeared last week um had, when i my friends came over they took some cuttings and i rediscovered my jalapenos even though they were, it was covered by the longevity spinach it's still still growing it's still bearing still has fruit on there look still has peppers still has peppers on there and she discovered this also it's a scotch bonnet pepper it's tiny because it's been cover covered by the longevity spinach all this time but it actually has peppers on it so scotch bonnet is one of the peppers that are of course the most important pepper for jamaicans the most important pepper but it it usually gets plagued at least for me and i know several people i know it gets plagued with disease and white flies so it's very difficult to grow it so normally when i get my peppers my scotch bonnet to grow i treasure it so i'm very happy to find this scotch bonnet and then there is this other one this other one is back here where did, where did i just see it hold on just saw another pepper is this it no that's a looks like a jalapeno where did my scotch bonnet go there was just another scotch bonnet that i hope i didn't pull out oh my gosh i just up, uprooted a scotch bonnet hold on oh geez hold on oh boy i just uprooted a scotch bonnet that was covered oh actually i didn't uproot it here it is another scotch bonnet that was covered by the um by the longevity spinach there it is so now that this is uncovered i'm gonna bring some soil and build up this area the soil i'm sure it's completely depleted look at this completely dry it's like sand it's completely dry completely depleted so i'm gonna oh go ahead and try and rebuild this soil here and cut back this i'm gonna cut this back to just a very small ball then i'll show you what i'm gonna do um to plant some out all right so i think i cut back all i've got to cut back today guys i cut back a mountain of sp spinach guys this is pounds and pounds of green this is worth probably hundreds of dollars if you try to buy this much spinach not meant not to mention longevity spinach which is which is a a very exotic very unique very nutritious spinach so you know it's going to cost a hundred times more than what you know about spinach costs anyway guys i cut it back significantly there's still a whole lot more spinach in here um you can see i have piles over here piles over there i actually discovered two more scotch bonnet peppers this is a scotch bonnet pepper right here which is looking almost dead but what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put some good soil around it i'm gonna cut it back um i also found this one buried oops i also found this scotch bonnet buried um you can see it's partially dried up but i'm gonna cut it back um you can prune these peppers all the way back and they'll come back this this one i won't prune uh, but i will give it some fertilizer it looks very anemic because it's been covered um here um this jalapeno is looking great and then this other jalapeno here this one wasn't covered but this one is still absolutely covered with fruit and since i'm in central florida we are not expecting a freeze until like sometime in january so i'm gonna let my peppers continue let my scotch bonnets have time to bear it'll be really great having three extra scotch bonnet trees this one scotch bonnet i have here this has given me um scotch bonnets for the entire year everybody who comes to my house they take some so even though it looks kind of pathetic it really does it's extremely productive i haven't bought a scotch bonnet since i've been in this house so that's pretty amazing or maybe i bought it when i just moved but this started bearing just months after i moved here and it has borne consistently so guys you can see i've cut this back significantly so i'm going to show you some really easy ways that i propagate this tree or that i'm gonna let this tree last so you can see because the, everywhere it drops it shoots roots this is very very easy to just stick this in the ground and it will continue growing but if you don't have roots say you get a cutting from a friend i'm going to show you 
how difficult it is to take this cotton and plant. Then I'll show you some that I planted from cottons recently. So first, let's stop right here. These are cottons that I took from my longevity spinach a couple weeks back. All I did was break it, stick it in the water, and you can see it's full of roots. So you can take these cottons and stick it in a pot. And let's just do that now because that's what I plan on doing anyway. So I'm taking my cuttings, sticking them in a pot, covering it up with soil. And right there, I have my cuttings. And I'm going to have a pot full of longevity spinach. You can see I took a, I have a very large pot. This is not sure how big this pot is, but it's pretty large. So I'm going to put like maybe five or six cuttings here. And I'm also going to plant some throughout the garden. Let me show you some cuttings that I did. Um, you remember uh, uh, five weeks exactly ago, I um, added several cuttings to my chicken coop, chicken run area. Let me go in here and show you. I added several cuttings here. And guys, look, my longevity spinach that was looking almost dead. Look at it. Look at how big it got in just five weeks. And not to mention my blue porter weed. That I also, these are all um, ones that I picked up from throughout the garden and planted here. These are some tiny little suckers and look how big they are. This was a cutting that I broke and stuck in here and look at it now. And quick update, all my other cuttings have grown significantly. My um, oregano, I haven't been able to keep the oregano here because Mr. Pinky loves it. So every time I plant oregano, he eats it. So. Um, but it's it's all good. I planted stuff here that he can eat. He's also eating my banana leaves, which I don't appreciate, but you know, it's all good. So I wanted to show you, you know, how easy it is to grow longevity spinach. What I plan on doing, I'm gonna pack maybe 20 Ziploc bags of longevity spinach leaves. For for eating, I don't I don't I've never tried to eat the stems, I'm sure you can. Um, except in shakes, I just throw the whole thing in shakes. But for cooking, I always just use the leaves themselves. Plus, I have such an abundant amount, I really don't need to have the stems. I just eat the leaves. Um, so I'm gonna just wash this. I don't. I don't think I need to show you that part. But I'm gonna remove the leaves, wash the leaves, pack them in Ziploc bags. So I'm hoping to have like get like 15, 20 bags of longevity spinach, um, frozen longevity spinach out of this. Um, so. That's how I'm gonna preserve it. I'm preserving it by adding some to water. You can actually use it as a nice um, floral arrangement or an, a nice plant arrangement. I have several of my plants in water on my patio. And I think it's beautiful. I think it's a beautiful plant. So you can have them as a plant on your patio, which I think, which I will be doing because when it freezes, I wanna make sure that my longevity spinach survives. And plus, when it gets really cold, I don't necessarily want to be coming outside to get spinach. So by having it as a patio plant, not only does it make beautify my patio, but I can just walk outside and hold on. So here you can see guys, um, <clears throat> I am planting my longevity spinach in a pot. In no time, this pot is going to be full of spinach and overflowing, just like this was overflowing. But now that I have it in a pot, I'm not worried about it. I have a ton of big pots throughout the garden. So I'm probably going to make maybe four or five pots of this. I'm going to stick them throughout the garden. Um, maybe stick, I don't know if I'm going to stick any in the ground yet. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I don't know yet. All right, guys, so that's it. That's it for this video. Just wanted to show you really quick how I am harvesting my longevity spinach and how I'm going to be using it um, as potted plants. That way I can preserve it for longer. I can also use it as in, in water just to beautify my patio. And of course, I'm going to be freezing tons of it to be using it for free future use. Till next time, guys. Bye now.